going on guys welcome to today's episode now as you can see behind me we are at Rich Co's Harley Davidson Chiang Mai dealership and right there is the lovely 48 1200 Sportster something a bit different but I'm very excited for it I hope you guys are too so stay tuned and let's find out what riding a Harley is all about so here we are 2019 Harley Davidson Sportster 48 and uh, first time for me riding a Harley and I must say I'm looking forward to it keyless ignition start it up for you guys it's a very soul surging start the whole bike shakes it's a nice looking bike man I gotta say if there's a Harley that I would be interested in buying I do think it would be this this is my kind of style with the peanut tank so yeah, let's sit on it. All right, hey, this is gonna be fun. I'm looking forward to this. All right, oh, nice and smooth. Hey, you can feel it's nice and torquey. Don't have to wring out the gears, the power. Instantly feels like it's down at around 5,000 rpm. So the guys at Richco Harley Davidson Chiang Mai have been gracious enough to give me a test ride of this Sportster 48 and I must say I am very excited for it. I think it's going to be a very uh, welcome difference because I have yet to ride a Harley. I like these uh, mirrors, they're pretty cool. You know, you've got the uh, forward controls, forward pegs, which, you know, when you're 190 centimeters like me, it's a nice thing. I mean, it's still not the largest bike, obviously. You can see my knees are pretty high, but because the bars are out. So we've got indicators on either side. We've got the left indicators, obviously, on the left and the right's on the right. Now it's a 1202 cc air-cooled V-twin. You can feel the uh, character coming from a bike like this. I like the way the engine's just kind of like bobbing and weaving underneath me, you know, going and coming back. It's nice. It's a characterful, very characterful. Just the engine itself gives the bike a, a load of character. It's a nice change from what I'm used to. It's definitely uh, likes a short shift. It's definitely the torque based engine. You can feel the power runs out throughout the gear towards the end. If you change the gear earlier, then there's a nice surge of torque for you waiting in the next gear. A really nice bike to just drive around to be your daily kind of bike. We'll see how it fares once we get to the highway and we get to, a, you know, where the mountains are a little bit. But so far in town, I think I've found its element straight away. It has a lot of vibes, but that's something that I personally would expect out of a 1200cc Harley. Now this bike's not particularly heavy, it's 252 kilograms, so it's not obviously a light bike. But I wouldn't class it as being too heavy, as it's got a low seat height, it's very, very easy to touch the ground so it doesn't really feel that heavy if you're into the harley lineup and don't know where to start in my honest opinion i think this is a great place to start it does look like the kind of bike that you can do a lot of things to the kind of bike that once you get the bars how you like them maybe the mirrors how you like them you can put that speedo down there if you want to literally unlimited things you can do with this bike you get like a custom paint job if you wanted on the peanut tank so many different kinds of bars you could get you could get those monkey hanging bars up here the exhaust will bring out the sound of it really is an untold amount of things that you can do two Harley Davidsons. Richco's Harley Davidson Chiang Mai dealer, you can go in there and you can basically tell the owner, Richie, or the manager, Bom, I want the bike to look like this. Have, show them some photos, have a vision, and these guys will 100% hook you up. If there's one thing you can confirm when you're buying a Harley, is that the custom scene is huge. I tell you, the only thing I feel like is genuinely missing on this bike, is the sound and obviously you get like a Vance and Heinz full system or something like that and you get a very nice sound out of it I'm sure I'm missing that uh that bark you know that it doesn't have the most confidence inspiring you know set of tires and I keep coming back to the word in my mind metallic it feels 
metallic, like a genuine new classic bike. Not a bike trying to be a classic bike that isn't a classic bike. It doesn't need to try because it feels like a genuine classic bike. See, I'm not changing gear or anything and then I got like this. That, that's a positive surge of torque. It's not lacking. You don't need much more than that for what the tires are as well like you can feel once you get into the corners you, you don't want more put performance than that really you'd need better rubber you know it's got enough torque to overtake the cars when you need to for sure stupid dog man well you can see right there the brakes feel good <laughs> yeah you can actually feel the uh, ABS was pumping there a little bit like that done a great job wasn't intrusive actually didn't I, I had no panic there at all pretty much which I'm surprised how calm I felt in that moment to be honest nowadays you might associate Harley Davidson with a cruising bike, a chilling out bike, a bike that's great for the highway, a relaxing bike. That's kind of what I thought Harleys were like. Now this bike doesn't really represent that. It's not the most comfortable. It's not the most powerful. It's not even the most chilled out on a long highway stretch. But you have to remember that you are on a more talky, urban, performance based Harley. If you associated this bike with a chilled out bike, you would be wrong. This guy's pulling over. <laughs> now some people say that the 1248 Sportster has a small tank and the rear suspension has not that much travel. Now I would say to this point, I have no beef at all with the suspension. The suspension is fine. My only beef with the bike itself is the fact that your legs and your arms are quite far further forward than your bum so it's not the most comfortable bike in that sense for my lower back it's a little bit tiring i am a tall guy so i want to make sure that it might just be me being 190 centimeters a tall guy definitely affects the ride itself but i love the engine and i love the looks of it the fuel lights come on i've done about 60 70 kilometers maybe maybe a little bit more I know that the tank is small, it doesn't hold a lot of petrol, but personally for me, I don't find that to be that big of a problem because you've got that peanut sized tank. Like the tank is probably the most iconic part of the design. If you put a bigger tank on it, it just wouldn't look like a 40 here anymore. Definitely feels like a great bike for the town, for the urban environment. But as you can see, I'm out here at the mountains right now. It's perfect to test out some of the highway capabilities of this bike itself. So I'm going to jump back on the bike, do a couple of these mountain roads, see how it handles some of the corners, see how it handles some of the highway. But to this point, I've got to say I'm very pleasantly surprised. So make sure you stay tuned and uh, see what else we think about this 2019 Sportster 48 1200. Now me as a non-Harley rider, a guy that hasn't rode a Harley until this day, would associate a Harley Davidson motorcycle to be really comfortable, great for long trips, have good straight line performance, and be customizably good looking. Now, some of those things apply to this bike, but most of them don't. I think this bike would be fantastic to customize and make your own, but at the same time, it's not the kind of bike I think you're gonna go on super long trips with. It does have a small tank, and it isn't the biggest bike not to mention there's no wind protection but having said all those things i still think it's the harley that i personally would buy and that's because i love to make a bike my own and this bike you could truly make your own constant flow of traffic on a sunday you know what time it is now it's time for cutie cinema
some very nice cinemas with the mountain and the bike and you know what's sick about this bike as well the keys in my pocket i have mentioned it a few times but this is a very nice feature i wish all bikes had nowadays just go up to the bike press that button disarm it comes with an alarm as well which is a nice feature and there you go so i've had a fair few hours in the corners on the mountain roads and i gotta say the tires aren't the most inspiring for the corners but the engine has enough torque that for as much as you might slow down when you go into the corner you can power right out of it so it handles it well the uh, rear shocks have a preload adjuster right there so you can get them to how you want them the front forks 49 millimeter front forks handle everything well i've had no bottoming out whatsoever and i think it's the kind of ideal bike to ride ride around the city in your regular clothes and just chill out take it easy and quite frankly that's a very nice part of riding that i don't do that much these days most of the times i'm kind of ripping around on my mt09 being a bit of a squid it's not a daunting bike it's not a scary bike it's a very welcoming bike and it's not underpowered either so it's a good mix regardless if you're an expert in the chopper world or a beginner I, I don't think anyone would be unhappy with it now harley is one of those brands where people that are interested in harleys only really want a harley and people that aren't interested in harleys kind of don't being a person that has never rode a harley before i want to review this bike in the best possible way i can now it can be quite a challenge when harley they seem to do everything very different to what you're used to when you review bikes i don't think it's worth comparing with other bikes because what it does it it best is what those bikes kind of don't do it, it, you have to really appreciate and understand the marketing and the whole image of harley davidson as a brand because they have one of the most loyal fan bases i've ever seen for any product let alone a motorcycle but for any product at all it's quite phenomenal what they've been able to do i believe their secret to success is accessories they have so many accessories to choose from a lot of the time it doesn't matter what you ride but once you make it your own thing you know once you make it you that's when you feel best on the bike and i think harley does that better than any brand i've ever come across in my life i believe that's the secret to their success so if you want to get high bars you know go for those kind of monkey style bars or you want to get low bars and make it really aggressive looking or you want to get an all blacked out exhaust or you want to get some like i mean it really is so many things i mean you can design the bike with different like parts on the engine to just make the whole thing have a completely different look to the to your mate who could have the exact same bike that's what i think they do better than anyone you have to respect their segment in motorcycle in the motorcycling world they they have something no other brand has And I feel like I can understand as to why Harley has such a big following because there really isn't many, if anything, like this. You can literally see the engine moving like an inch forward and back all the time. Like it helps with the character. So one thing that I was kind of mentioning when I was driving is about comfort and positioning. I mentioned it a few times. This bike isn't comfortable like i was kind of thinking it might be being a harley and stuff but i just want to make sure i validate to anyone watching this video that it's meant to be a sporty ride it's meant to be an aggressive ride and i'm not gonna lie after pretty much a whole day riding my back is kind of tired i was expecting it to be a more com more comfortable bike than it is i would say that if you swapped out the bars you know maybe move the pegs a little bit less forward you'll get a better all-round positioning for me personally i'm just a tall guy so i don't want to say too much about the actual positioning 
when I'm 190, 190 centimeters, it's probably less comfortable for me than it is for most people, to be honest. It's a sporty Harley, not a cruising Harley or a touring Harley. So I've been standing here for a minute trying to remember what it is I was going to say as I pulled up here and I've remembered what I was going to say now and what it is is if I was going to go for performance I'd want more performance than this but if I was going to go for comfort I would want more comfort than this so I guess I'd choose a different Harley if I was going to be buying a Harley Does that make sense? I think that makes sense I think that makes sense It's got enough power but it's not like super powerful so yeah, I'd probably go one way or the other. Crazy power or crazy comfort, not in the middle. So my time with the 48 Sportster is up. I had an absolute fantastic time. The guys have been great here at Harley Davidson and I've enjoyed riding something different. If you're looking at buying a Harley, of course, hit these guys up. All of their details will be in the description. Really enjoyed it, man. Lovely bike, great experience. These guys are super, super nice as well. So there we have it. The Sportster 48, all black. Oh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. As an all-round package, it's the Harley Davidson I believe I would buy. The reason being, it's kind of the perfect package, Squid Life. Now you know because he just squid overtook us, we gotta overtake him now, right? We can't allow the 950cc, minus 950cc that he has to stay in front of us. There, as you can see, easily enough torque to fly out of a corner and leave anyone that may be behind you in the dust. <laughs>